I am Dr. Emerald, doctor of chiropractic. <laughs> this is... I'm Kat Garcia, licensed professional counselor. And we are Painting Wellness. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing the role of chiropractic in emotional regulation. In this episode, we're going to be going over what is emotional regulation, how does that manifest in the body, and how does chiropractic help in resetting the body's stress response. Um, and we're going to go into just wherever also we end up going in that conversation. So we're excited to have you along that journey. So Kat, would you be open to explaining what emotional regulation is? Yeah. I mean, emotional regulation is different for everybody though. Oh yeah. So, um, it's when we are able to notice our emotions Mm -hmm. and not act out in order to calm down. Right? Oh, I like that. Okay. Right? Okay, I haven't heard that before. Total, yeah. total merch. I, I, we need to write that down. We, hey, don't steal that. We're no. going to make shirts. Yeah, we're going to make yeah. shirts. So, yeah, so we calm down in order not to act out. So if you're feeling really angry um, or instead of going and punching a wall, mm-hmm. you take some time to breathe, to gather yourself. It's like the gathering yourself, right? Mm-hmm. If you're sad, you're not going to run away crying although you might i mean sometimes it happens um if you're talking to your partner you don't yell at them right Mm -hmm. you're intentional about how you're feeling and then you speak so that's emotional regulation and it looks different again different for everybody for every person yeah and how they respond to that absolutely can you have so we talked about like what i consider to be maybe like lower or like i'll just like sad type of things can you have the opposite of like maybe getting dysregulated and being manic or like super happy and like because that's that's a thing right like how it is a thing it is a thing um i mean again you said manic um there are disorders where people are like super like and they're like oh my god i'm gonna spend all the money Oh, I love doing that. Yes. Um, or I'm going to gamble all the money or mm. I'm going to have all the sex because that can be part of being manic, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, it can happen. And then we, we see it like also with people that have maybe ADD mm-hmm. and they're just bouncing off the walls because those squirrels are in a rave. And, you know, we're like, you know, and so it can be like very, very... Um, excited or excitable Mm -hmm. so yes you can be that way and that also requires emotional regulation Mm -hmm. so you can either way across the spectrum of your emotions it's yes never most nothing is black and white Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to mental health or emotional health there's no black and white it's there's always all the shades so i like that yeah Yeah. there's uh we used to not used to still do talk about the uh scale of gray where there isn't black or white, but it's this nice scale, just as you said, mm-hmm. like there's all these different colors that are making up emotions. Yep. And so being able to to like see that and regulate without acting out, mm-hmm. whatever that might look like for you, Correct. is helpful if you want to participate in our society yes. or with other people in general. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to talk and dive into is, is more of the stress manifestation today mm-hmm. in the body of how that can be really, really difficult at times for people when maybe they're feeling a lot of anxiety, Mm -hmm. right? Or something happened at work or with their partner and they just are feeling like they're getting spun out and they're not sure how to to manage that. Mm -hmm. Um, And so how chiropractic fits into this, because we've talked a lot obviously about mental health, a little bit about chiropractic, but one of the things that I've really enjoyed about our conversations is how as a doctor of the nervous system, I just see there's so much overlap here. Absolutely. And this is a big one is how does your body respond to these heightened emotional states mm-hmm. and how does specifically your nervous system manage that? Yeah. Right. So one of the things I love about when you do get adjusted is that essentially it's like a reset button mm-hmm. for that Absolutely. Like, system. Like if you were really going, as we talked about in a previous episode, fight, flight, or freeze, and we're just going autonomic overload Mm -hmm. and just going for it, that adjustment can help kind of, it's like a restart button on the computer where it's like, you just take a moment, reboot, reset. Absolutely. And kind of help, we'll say level out a little bit. But what I like is, is that similarly with 
the adjustment, it's not only just helping bring you back to the quote unquote middle of like if you're feeling anxious, but also if you're feeling maybe a little bit ADHD or too, too active, mm-hmm. it can help regulate that. Um, so have you ever, I don't know if you've ever, we've really ever talked about that when you've gotten adjusted, like how maybe um, you felt, you know, I, maybe I think like for me, it's, um, it impacts, you know, I sit most of the day. Mm-hmm. And so I can notice if I'm, and, and I, I know a lot of people notice this, like, oh, I have, you know, my neck hurts. And everybody was like, I'm going to go get a massage. And I'm like, no, go see a chiropractor. Mm-hmm. Like, because massages are great, but if it's, if it's not muscular, if it's joints, then, you know, you can tell them, hey, I'm going to adjust you. And then this is also muscular. So how do we deal with that? Mm-hmm. Versus a massage therapist probably can't really assess that. Um, and to me, like... All my stress is like right, mm-hmm. and I start getting headaches All and in the things. neck, and I know like I just told you I'm like I need to get like I can I can hear the marbles and they're like click, 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 you know, and so absolutely like for me it's a huge it's a huge reset especially mm-hmm. um, when my neck is when my neck is adjusted and also my hips because I cross my legs all day, even though my doctor told me not to. Um, and I wear heels. You know, I'm I'm not a fun doctor. I'm a fun guy, but not a fun doctor. You know, I I feel like I'm a non-compliant patient right now, but it's enough about me. Yes, I do think, I I mean, I feel like it's a reset for many, many reasons. Yes. Well, and it comes back to like, really what we're working with is the nervous system Mm -hmm. in that. And so if your nervous system is struggling to get those messages to the different organs that are that are making hormones or different part like your brain is not able to function on those states like that's going to increase the stress of your body which then can lead to these feelings of more anxiety mm-hmm. because all of a sudden now things aren't firing the way that we would normally like them Absolutely. to right and one of the examples that I talk to a lot of people about and I'm sure I've talked to you about is our rib cage um oh, yes. you yes all of this we work on the rib cage so the reason for that is yes, I, you know, many chiropractors, they focus on the spine. I focus on the spine too, but what's attached to the spine? Mm-hmm. The ribs, right? Well, so what are the ribs? Like what's, what are the ribs protecting? My lungs. Your lungs. And yeah. all, all the other stuff. Just vital that, organs. There's the heart in there. It keeps me ticking. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So if your body is noticing that there's like a change in how your ribs are moving or the alignment maybe from like a car accident, Mm -hmm. sports, or just even posture, your body is going to struggle with that in the sense that it's going to notice that, hey, there's like extra pressure being applied to our lungs, or maybe our heart has a little bit extra pressure because there's not as much motion or movement as you're breathing, that then all of a sudden your body's like, hey, this isn't working. Our, Our vital organs are not able to function properly. And if our vital organs aren't working the way they should or having the room, Mm -hmm. fight or flight response. Yeah. It's amazing how, I know that we've talked about somatic, Mm -hmm. right? About how our body um, keeps score of the trauma. And it's interesting because what I hear you say is that if our body is not functioning well, it can, as opposite of somatic, can cause anxiety. Which is true because you always say it's not a problem till it impacts what we love. Mm -hmm. And so then we can start getting anxious, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if my back hurts, I can't, you know, exercise or I can't work or I can't do daily living, like washing dishes. Like it's, and so it causes a lot of anxiety. People get really stressed out. I can't clean. I can't pick up my kids. I can't do all these things that really we got to do because our body's not functioning in the best way possible, which could be improved. Definitely can be improved and like we can we can experience that anxiety on that level certainly. Mm-hmm. And we can also experience like the increased blood pressure, increased respiratory or breath, excuse me, <clears throat> breathing rate of how quickly you're breathing um, because it's trying to work through these issues because it's it's being impacted that way. And what I so here's what I love though about the body is that it's it's really intelligent and it's not just deciding to do these things, Mm -hmm. right? If we have high blood pressure, if we're breathing more than we normally do, there's a reason for that. 
And usually that reason is a compensation or it's making changes to mm -hmm. allow you to keep trying to do these things. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so that's where we really want to take a look or take a step <clears throat> back and say, like, how how is this all affecting us and what's really the root cause? Because if we're only looking at the high blood pressure, but we're not looking at well, why. Yeah. Why do we have that high blood pressure? Our body is just going to adapt to if we're just artificially lowering that blood pressure. It's like, no, 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 we, we, we do need it this Some, high. Something, yeah. Something, so it's going to eventually push it back up. So we just yeah. got to be careful of there's that cycle. A, there's this thing that you, one time, um, I know you were adjusting my husband, and you, you said, well, you know, um, I asked him if he has stomach problems. I'm like, why? That's so weird. Because his hip was not aligned. I think it was what it was. And I'm like, you can tell that from the hip <laughs> like and so it's really amazing because we when we think of integrative care which mm -hmm. is what we do in this office you know with having you here and it's it's amazing that we can say you know you not only do you, are you getting anxious and you need like maybe counseling but we need to maybe refer you to a GI doctor because mm -hmm. something's happening you know or you know once you get adjusted your stomach it's going to feel better yeah. or it's amazing to me that, you know, well, that, that just goes back to when we remove the interference or, or maybe the source of what's going on, mm -hmm. the body's going to heal. And that's, that's really fun to, to think about is like, it just oftentimes there's a block. Mm -hmm. It's almost like if you put something like a, like a, I think it's called a chalker behind a tire to stop it from moving. Well, it's just like removing that and allowing for that wheel to spin. That's our body. And a lot of times it just has something that's, preventing it from moving the way it needs to. Mm -hmm. And so once we get that going, then it takes over again. Right. Yeah. And so that's like with the, with the GI issue or a stomach problem, a lot of times it's just the nerve is not able to send the signal and receive the information it needs to the yeah. brain. And that's where it just going back into that emotional regulation or stress response. Many times it's an, it's our body adapting because something is happening and it's trying to manage that. Yeah. And that it makes me want to like really um, encourage the idea of we have to continue care. Like we can't come once and have Dr. Emerald say, well, listen, this is what's happening and you get adjusted once and you're like, okay, deuces, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Like you have to keep coming and getting the care that you need and in all the areas that that could be. Because I know that that's one of the things like um, we can maybe get like a little feel a little bit better we're like oh good now I can do all the things and mm -hmm. then we mess up even bigger because we don't follow through so uh, you know I know that we've talked about the importance of following and care and yeah and I mean that's not the sexy stuff of like healthcare in the sense of like yeah we gotta like get like the exciting part is in the beginning when all of a sudden the symptoms or the mm -hmm. things are going away but the body is still very much like working through things and trying to to take that time to allow to fully heal because it's if you're only taking care of your, your ship when there's water coming in and you know there's holes and you're just trying to patch holes, you're not able to do all the other things like, I don't know, scrubbing the deck or painting and all these other things that you would love to do. I don't know if that analogy makes any sense, but it's, it's just in the sense of like when the seas are calm, that's when you can really dig deep and make those major life impacting changes. And that's for, in my opinion, anything in our lives, be it with healthcare, mental health, physical health, mm -hmm. or even just Know, hobbies right absolutely I mean, like going and being consistent mm -hmm. um so like that's also though we have to remember is that long-term stress on the body or long-term stress of stress on the body if we're only just patching those holes it's still causing issues for our body to have to manage be it mental physical emotional mm -hmm. and at least in my my opinion around that so that's also where just because we don't have a symptom that we notice doesn't mean that there's not an issue, which is kind of sometimes feels doom and gloom, but it's also where, you know, the, the analogy in the sense of if someone is out and I'm going to use golfing cause we're in Arizona, there's someone that's golfing every day. And then he goes out one day and he has a heart attack. It's not like, I know, that's doom and gloom, geez. doom and gloom. We just went there right there. Wow. That escalated real quick from the boat to the to golf, doom, golf heart right, attack. But <laughs> Yeah, the point still <laughs> the point that I'm trying to make around that is that is was that individual having heart problems just on that day, or were there heart problems leading up to that that he didn't real yeah. or they didn't realize? Yeah, for sure. Right, and so that's that's the the long term stress on the body of many times we don't <clears throat> recognize that something's going on 
until there's a catastrophic event. So what do you recommend, you know, if we're saying, well, even if you don't have symptoms, you know, that doesn't mean something's not wrong. Mm -hmm. So what then is your recommendation for people that don't have symptoms? Because then we're going to say, well, you know, you could go golfing and die, but <laughs> even though you don't have any, right? Yeah. And so what, what would your recommendation as a provider be for people? So I, so two parts on that. One is the number of times, and I'm, I have to believe that you also encounter this from time to time is where people are maybe a little bit, they found themselves disconnected or they don't realize that something that they've been dealing with is not like, they just are like, oh, doesn't everyone, I get a lot of, everyone has headaches. Mm -hmm. And isn't that normal? No, it's not normal. It's common, but it's not, that shouldn't oh, happen. I love that. I love that differentiation. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a big, you know, and that's just an easy one to, to go with. Mm -hmm. And, and definitely like, I'm not saying that just because you're not having symptoms, you're going to have a heart attack. That, no, not by that's no not means. what he's saying. Not, not what I'm saying, but it's it's making the point of sometimes we can get into these times where, or maybe here's a gentler, more gentle analogy, <laughs> is we bend over to pick something up like a pencil or a pen, and then our back goes out. Oh, yeah. Right? Similar. It's like that problem was, was occurring for a yeah. lot longer. It's just that know, was it's the like time the, that we felt Oh, I'm it. just getting old. I'm just getting old. That's why my back spasmed when I stood up. Yes. I got <laughs> it has nothing else to do with, I'm just old. <laughs> and yeah. you're like, okay, that's, it's not supposed to happen. No. So, yeah. Um, and so there's, I just learned or heard about this man. I totally forget his name already, unfortunately, but he's like, I think in his nineties and he's done, um, uh, iron, uh, shoot. What is that? Hiking superstitions. Flat iron, mm. like tons of times, tons and tons, of, and he's in his 90s, and he just like goes up and down. So whenever, and I love hearing those stories because one of my other sayings I love to say is that age only matters in three things, wine, cheese, and good whiskey. Oh. So age has nothing to do about it. It's our narrative mm -hmm. around what age means. Absolutely. Um, so going back though to the question of like, how do we know, if we're not having symptoms, how do we know if there is a problem? Well, I think that's where just like going to the dentist, you go to the dentist to get cleanings and mm -hmm. annual, maybe, you know, twice, maybe even a year checkups. You're not necessarily going to see mm -hmm. like, hey, what needs to happen? It's like, hey, they can see things and they know things that are going mm -hmm. on that maybe I don't. So as the patient, I don't know what's going on in my yeah. teeth, right? Um, but I could see also that there could be some really good um, benefits of even just checking in with your mental health provider if you're not currently seeing someone it's like hey maybe i just go in for a consultation or one session just to see if there's some things that i could work through mm -hmm. or with the chiropractor of saying hey i just want to have myself my child my family whatever checked mm -hmm. to see if maybe there are some things that i thought were normal but doesn't mean that that's healthy yeah yeah and and you know we we that goes back to all the being mindful and making sure that you're paying attention to your body and that you're advocating for yourself and you um, take time to really consider, okay, is this, you know, when talk to your doctor, when you go for your yearly physical or, mm -hmm. you know, um, be mindful how we're responding to stress and maybe there's some mental health. And, um, you know, a lot of times, I mean, even when people come in, it's like, well, I'm, you know, I'm not depressed or I'm not what, and I'm like, well, people don't have to be depressed to come to counseling. It doesn't yeah. have to be where there's this acute problem, right? It can simply be, I'm stressed out at work. Mm -hmm. I'm having problems with my kids or I'm having problems with my spouse. Because the reality is that life is stressful. And so seeing a chiropractor, seeing your doctor, seeing a therapist, it does not have to mean that there's something wrong. Yeah. It could simply be that life is happening. Yeah, so. life is going, and, and we want to adapt to that. Absolutely. And that's always, that's what I love to see too, especially like with mental health, is how can I be more adaptable to situations where it could feel very, very stressful? Yeah. Is there ways for me to have tools and strategies to navigate those types of yeah. things? Yeah, and in chiropractic, I know that for sure you've given me tools that I have to do at home so I can continue um, practicing my muscles and stretching and doing all those, I don't know how the clinical terms, they're like keep chiropracting yeah. well, i just made that word up but you yeah. know what i'm saying like all these exercises that maybe help me not have as much neck pain once i have mm -hmm. been adjusted and so th this well, is so a toolbox it, it's it's i think what we're both i'm gonna make a, an assumption here but i think if i'm on the right track 
because I know you a little bit. Eh. Uh, just, just, the, <laughs> just a snippet. Just the Tuesday through Thursday cat. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's it's we're wanting to empower people. Yeah. We're wanting to give them tools so that they can have agency in their health, so that they can understand what's going on. They can make decisions about their health and have that like power that mm -hmm. like, hey, this is my body. This is what I want to do with it. And I think that's such a big part of giving those tools, giving those strategies. Um, Cause you know, I jokingly and lovingly say, I'm not trying to be a babysitter. I'm trying to be a guide in this. So that's, that's where those tools and strategies can come in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what I would love to do, cause um, in, in a future episode is how does like emotional regulation, we, I felt like we talked a lot about general regulation and how chiropractic helps in mm -hmm. adults specifically it seemed like we were paired more with that yeah i'd love to talk about in a future one about kids oh okay yeah uh because i'm sure that there are plenty of parents out there that would like some strategies from both of us on how do we help our kids navigate these new experiences for them that can feel really big or or whatever it might be in a way that is also creating and showing safe spaces mm -hmm. allowing the children to experience these emotions and also for parents to survive yes that. yes because kids are hard i don't I, know I, well i do yeah all right okay. well thank you everyone i think uh oh oh my gosh see what is this, happening right i now? almost forgot i almost went back to the campsite and forgot that we did a ton of gathering <laughs> I'm like, what is, why and, are we wrapping up without the hunting? Oh my gosh. And now, so we've kind of like gone through and we've, we've flushed out the birdies from the bush and Kat is going to go through and she's going <laughs> to hunt these little <laughs> birdies. Oh, uh, and so boy. what we're doing is we're going to recap everything yeah. for you. That's what we're, we're laughing yeah. about. Um, okay. So let's see. Um, I was, I was paying attention. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to, um, so we talked about what emotional regulation was and how it does look different for everybody. Mm -hmm. And it really is about calming down before acting out. Yeah. Um, and we talked about how, when our body is stressed because something, um, in the system is not working well, that it can impact our emotional health stress. Mm -hmm. So stress in the body can cause stress in our mind and, and emotional health, mental health, um, and how excess, um, stress in our body can also, uh, you know, impact the things that we do on every day. So we really want to make sure that we are doing maintenance checkups, mm -hmm. like, you know, get, get your annuals and, um, visit the doctors, um, and the chiropractors to make sure that you're getting assessed regularly. So it doesn't happen that it's catastrophic when, the yeah, symptom fine, does appear fine tune things fine -tune. along the way it's like uh where on a if you're on a plane they're constantly making mm -hmm. small navigational changes all the way through the flight so fine tuning yeah. make sure to make sure that we're, we're just getting checked mm -hmm. um and i think that's it no yeah i think you know just like look personal opinion look for providers and and other like people in your world that are helping to empower you and give you tools and strategies yes. Because that's what we really, we love to see. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, the sooner that you're able to check in on these things and start making those adjustments, the easier it's going to be. Absolutely. And then you're going to be able to live life doing the things that you love to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's great. Awesome. Well, I like, I like that. This so, is it for today, I guess. Yeah. For yeah. now. We'll, we'll check in now. next time. Later. Uh, so I'm Dr. Emerald and... I'm Kat Garcia and this is Painting Wellness. See, look, right, give me a clink. There we are. <laughs>